Yeah, it's good boys, just, you know, keep working on it so we can actually win the Champions League next season. In fact, I know what, do Pioni practice while, uh, oh god, it's Bill. Ah, uh, yeah, well, Bill, I checked to Bill after he's won the A-League, okay? Work on your penalties, for the love of God, work on your penalties. Bill, how are we, mate? Um, congratulations on winning the A-League. I told you you'd win with a 4 2 3 one vertical ticky taker like I used to do. Thanks for the good advice, Sean. We have some proper club heroes here now. Yeah, I, I would appreciate if you put me back on at least a favoured personnel for the club, because, you know, I did win you three other things. You know, it feels a bit harsh that I'm not an icon, honestly. I'm, I'm waiting for my statue outside Mount Smart. I'll consider it now we're winning again. Yeah, I do know you like winning, Bill. Um, look, while I've got you on the line, I've just had a look at your contracts expiring, because I do that with all the A-League clubs, try and get some good players down here. I noticed that Jordan and Ike, you've got their contracts expiring, and they're still Australians not far away from becoming New Zealanders. So just wondering if you're going to offer them a new contract. That's not my decision. Bill, I know you've got so much power up there. I saw the pitch invader thing. I'm pretty sure it was your idea. So I know you can get some contracts to the players you own. So just let me know if you're gonna. Otherwise, maybe have a word to them and try and tell them that Kashmir is a good place to come. Because I really want them in New Zealand set up, okay? It's up to the manager. Bill, you're lying. No, you're lying. gotta go. And I still Bye. have my statue. Bill, don't, don't hang up on me, Bill. Where's my statue, Bill? Party in the streets in the cities on Episode number 52 of the New Zealand Building Nation here on Sean Does FM with both Kashmir Technical and the All Whites and coming up today hopefully can lift the Southern League title before we do head off on our two month or so break which we do have here for some reason we'll take on two teams right near the top of the Southern League table in the Dunedin City Royals and also Nelson Suburbs and hopefully as I said can maybe lift that title before we do head in to that two month break from this competition so if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we come into this one having just played one game off the back of yesterday's episode, the OFC Champions League final, which unfortunately didn't quite go so well. And then we beat the team. We're actually heading off to the FIFA Club World Cup in Western Suburbs in the first round of the Chatham Cup. So if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Good ending. Not so good a start. Unfortunately, injuries and whatnot did cost us against Auckland City. Yet again, we just played one game off the back of that. And it was in the league where we took on Christchurch. You know who this season are struggling just a little bit. As you can see, all the way down in six. To be fair this game a bit closer than I was anticipating but thankfully we did hold on for a 4 free win at halftime looked like we'd win this quite comfortably goals there to Paquette and a double to Ahmed Shusha they did grab a goal back about 10 minutes into the second half but off the back of that Lorenzo Johnson made it 4-2 they grabbed two goals late there through Milicic inside the last 15 minutes but thankfully we just did enough to hold on there and pick up a 4-3 win a little bit concerningly yet again We've conceded all of our shots on target, but thankfully we're able to hold on and keep up our unbeaten record in the Southern League. So what that means going into these last couple of games that we are going to play before we head in to that break while the Northern League and the Central League do catch up. We're eight points clear of our first opposition in today's episode in the Dunedin City Royals. One further point back to the second opposition in Nelson Suburbs. Three games we're going to cover off during the course of today's episode. If we can beat those two teams, I do think there's a chance we could lift the league title in that Nelson Suburbs game. And I think with only six games left for the teams near the top of the table, like Safiri Mead, Bays, Otago, Uni, Christchurch United, and Selwyn United, they will need a lot of luck to make their way into the National League Championship phase. This is what the Central League does look like. We're noting lower hut. There are Phoenix affiliates, so can actually make their way into the National League. And there's the Northern League, as you'd expect the OFC Champions League holders as well as the National League Championship holders are on top of that in Auckland City. But before we have a look at our first opposition in today's episode in the Dunedin City Rules and also do a bus trip before we do head in to that game. First up, we have now reached pretty much the end of the Isuzu A-League season. Of course, we are a former club AFC Auckland do play in and thankfully now that they've actually hired a coach who does play a 4-2-3-1 they are the champions beating out Melbourne City 
by seven points. The Phoenix yet again finishing just behind the winners in third so, so far. Quite close to picking up that title, but not quite doing it. To be fair, though, without players like George McDonald, that's not a bad effort at all. And then behind that, the Melbourne Victory, Western Sydney, and a bunch of other teams we don't really care about. Marconi in South Melbourne, they've been relegated. And Newcastle currently are beating Redcliffe in the relegation playoff. You'd imagine Newcastle will probably hold on and keep their spot in the A-League. For next season's AFC Auckland, back to being champions after that one bad season after we did leave there because of the registration bug, which if you're still wondering, hasn't been fixed yet. So thankfully, we did make the move. Otherwise, we'd just be sitting there waiting for quite a while to get the save back underway. But the reason we bring up the A-League is because in a month or so's time, players do come off contract in this competition. I have had a look and noticed there's some quite big names that are coming off contract there at AFC Auckland. All the players down to Tim Easthope, and a lot of them are on my shortlist. Thomas Lovbauschitz actually is already confirmed to come here at the end of this year, so he'll be coming in for 2030. Should be a good option at both right back and left back, but players like Courtney Perkins, he's still Australian, a couple of years away from becoming a New Zealander, could be an option for the national team, as could Aiki Sukamoto, and as well as that, quite a few local lads in the Wayne Trainer Tamer, to Hotman de Villiers, Billy Debenham, David Busselage, and Justin Keat. They are all coming off contract at the end of this season. We're interested to see if other A-League teams or overseas teams poach some of those players. We can see the, uh, there's some Saudi clubs interested in the Wayne train and Justin Keat, some Saudi clubs as well. as some MLS clubs to be fair. Josh Prickering, our other starter in the All-Whites on the left wing. He's actually been one of the best players so far this season since he's gone to the Chicago Fire over in the MLS, but that's something which could be worth keeping an eye on, just because there could be some players there that could really strengthen our squad here at Cashmere Technical, still with around about 5k left in the wage budget. It could be a good time to strengthen the squad so that they're all gelled in and together before we hit that OFC Champions League next season, and we don't get that group phase weirdness that we got a couple of episodes ago, and also going back and having a look at the Wellington Phoenix, the other New Zealand team, just to see who's coming off contract there. A couple of familiar names coming off contract there too, most notably Nathan Lobo, the man that we formerly had at AFC Auckland. He's wanted though by a Saudi Arabian club, but Adam White, who's second choice at left back in the All Whites, and to be fair, still a pretty promising player at 20 years old. He's coming off contract and no one wants him. I haven't managed him yet at club level. I'm quite tempted to try and get him in here at Kashmir Technical if he wants to come, but we'll see when we do get to the end of June while we're going through that break we do have here in the Southern League, but definitely a few players there that we could pick up to really strengthen our squad here at Kashmir Technical, albeit you could argue we don't need to based on the season preview, but also we keep losing to Auckland City in big games, so maybe wouldn't be the worst idea to keep trying to improve our squad here at Kashmir Technical. But first up, in today's episode, we do take on the Dunedin Sea Rules. In fact, before we get to that too, an update on the Under-20 World Cup, because we are missing a couple of players at that tournament currently. We'll just go find where that is, and there it is there. New Zealand have actually made their way through to the second round of that competition. They will take on Uruguay. Going back to the group stage though, they have actually got through in pretty impressive fashion, having won all three of their games in a group which did contain Saudi Arabia, Austria and Senegal. So the under is actually doing a really good job at that World Cup. My son, he popped up with a goal in that first game. Also, Connor Kerwin in the second one and Adam yet again, first goal scorer for the All Whites coming from behind to beat Senegal 3-2. In that last game, some impressive stuff so far. We're interested to see how that does translate into the knockouts, but that does mean a couple of our players are missing for these couple of games in today's episode, or at least the first one anyway. And that's quite important because it does mean we're quite limited in terms of the under 20 options that we can put out as we need to for these National League games. So there might be a couple of interesting players in there who usually would not be starting, but we are taking on the Dunedin City Royals first in a top of the table clash. They were, of course, the division below this last season. So interesting to see they're doing so well back in the top division. They come to this one, though, 
off the back of a 1-0 defeat to Sale United. And this season, they are down in seventh. So you'd like to think this one, even though it is down in Dunedin, is a very winnable game for us, even with those players missing on international duty and also still missing both Callan Elliott and Josh Hawkins like we were for those games in yesterday's episode. But before we get stuck in to this first game today, we haven't been to the Caledonian ground yet. It's also the venue for Otago University. So it's time for a bus trip. And we start off with our accommodation down here in Dunedin because apparently we did travel down the day before the game, not just a day trip to Dunedin, which you could probably do. I've changed the accommodation from when we actually played there with the All Whites back when we took on Thailand and one other team, of course. There was construction around that hotel. That usually ends up in us playing quite poorly. So this time we are going to the Amros Motel. Not the flashiest option that we could go to, but it's fairly close to the Caledonian ground, which to be fair, also quite close to Forsyth Bar Stadium, the big stadium down there in Dunedin. That looks fairly decent. They've got Sky TV, which does mean I can keep an eye on all the sport around the world. For the most part, there are some other streaming channels that have other stuff here in New Zealand, but for the most part, Sky TV is most of it. There is what the hotel does look like. There you can see what's nearby. To be fair, quite close to some areas that we did travel past on our previous bus trip. So this could be quite a short one, but we are gonna stay at the Amros Motel. Nice little cushy accommodation for us there. Does look fairly decent. This will be our accommodation for our trip down to Dunedin. And also when we do take on Otago University, seeing as these two teams do play at the same ground and not a long drive, only seven minutes, 2.2 kilometers. And as I said, going past quite a few things we went past last time, in particular, Lone Star Dunedin, the Otago Uni Library, and also Clubs and Society Center, and also the Tunis Cars on the way to Forsyth Bar Stadium. So this might not be the longest bus trip. We can cut out the middle bit, I think, and just focus on the start and the finish. But it's time to get our journey underway from outside of the Amros Motel. But I've done it again. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's construction right next door. I don't know if I like Dunedin. This could be a bad episode coming up if we lose to these guys, because honestly, they shouldn't be that good. But we've picked another hotel with construction nearby. Hopefully the rooms are nice and soundproof. Otherwise, maybe we go park somewhere else and sleep in the minivan. But it's now time to make our way towards the Caledonian ground. As I said, it's just past where Forsyth Bar Stadium was, which of course we did do in a bus trip, as I said, with the All Whites back when we took on the War Elephants of Thailand. But now we make our way down George Street. And I'm pretty sure we've done this before on that previous bus trip up until the point that we did get to Forsyth Bar Stadium. So if you don't think we'll need to show you guys too much of this up until we get quite close to the Caledonian ground. And if you remember that past bus trip through the Forsyth Bar Stadium, you'll remember this one. We're now going past the Turner's Cars here on Anzac Avenue, cars, cars, cars and whatnot, but we'll make our way here past the Forsyth Bar Stadium, of course, where we went for those All Whites games, seeing as that is the big stadium, the covered stadium down there in Dunedin. But this time we go past it, and now we go kind of straight here and continue on Logan Street, does look like a little bit of a left-hand turn. Indeed, it is in fact not Logan Street, Logan Park Drive. Now we can see quite a few grounds here on both the right-hand side and the left-hand side, not too sure if these are actually the grounds that we're playing this football game at, considering that does look pretty decent, but we'll keep going here up to where it does say the Caledonian ground itself, but that could actually be where we're playing this game, not too sure whose club rooms they might be, but we'll see if we can spot any other football grounds on our way here. I think over there on the right-hand side, you just saw it briefly, that might have been the cricket ground down there in Dunedin in the University of Otago Oval, just looking at the state of some of those sight screens. We'll keep going here down the Logan Park Drive and see if we can actually spot the proper football ground here for the Caledonian, who is supposed to be playing this game in today's episode against the Dunedin City Royals. Also, this area is used for athletics. Not too sure exactly where they are sending us here in terms of Google Maps. 
there's a center which we could be heading towards apparently we need to go this way a bit more we'll just go down here go past the speed bump and see what's coming up that to be fair does also look like a football ground so that might actually be where we're playing this game in today's episode actually getting a decent view of it as well though to be fair there isn't much parking around on this side but that maybe is not a bad thing because you could get a window broken if there's an errant shot or clearance a bit more parking back around that side of this area but lots of sport facilities here at the Caledonian I do think that might be the one we're playing on can't actually see the grandstand I saw before back when we did the picture in FM but it does look like the most likely venue for this game that we are about to play we'll just see if I can find some better pictures of this ground without using street view and as it turns out having done a bit more research we are actually playing on the inside of the athletics track that's where the number one soccer ground is so we actually look on the left hand side not the right hand side here and there's quite obviously a decent football ground in there it's not too sure how I missed that before but there's our venue for the games that we do play here in Dunedin in the Southern League to be fair does look like one of the better grounds in the South Island at least in terms of the condition the field is in it does look in good condition as you'd expect considering this was taken back when teams were training here for the FIFA Women's World Cup last year but there's our ground and our bus trip for Dunedin, we're about to take on the Dunedin City Royals in a top of the table clash. And here are the team sheets for this top of the table clash. There are the Dunedin City Royals. They are going with a 4 3 3 kind of one defensive midfielder and also one central attacking midfielder. A couple of changes for us Granville and Goal Victoros can start alongside McGoldrick because these days has just become a New Zealander, albeit not yet eligible to play for the All Whites. Also, Shusha in the cam roll. Jansen a bit tired with Adam away on international duty. Also Walker at left wing. And we have got Gilbert up front. So quite a few changes going in to this top of the table clash just to keep on top of player fitness and workload and whatnot. But an early highlight here, Shusha tries a really good goal individually. But their hockey comes up with a good save there for the Royals in front of their home fans, which to be fair, doesn't look like there's too many of them. But now a chance for us here from a corner. We take it short. It goes back to Walker. He will cut inside, place it across there looking for Shusha. Not a good ball though. That's that highlight done. Still nil all. Early doors, although now another highlight. It does start that one. Does whack there, I think, Victor Ross when he wasn't looking for it. It's a bit of a falcon, but thankfully not quite as bad as that one in the NRL a couple of weeks ago. If you saw that, which happened to the player from the Redcliffe Dolphins, he got concussed from a ball which hit him in the face, which is bloody funny, but it was. A little bit concerning, but now we're back on the attack. Walker squares this one nicely for Gilbert, who will put it away and give us a nice early 1-0 lead here at the Caledonian ground. Nice ball forward there to Nathan Walker from Jose Pedro. Actually got it back. They played a nice little 1-2 there just to get Walker in behind the defense. And nice finish there from Gilbert with his left foot. We go 1-0 up after five minutes. And the highlights continue early in this game. Only a couple of minutes on from that goal, which did play us in front through Gilbert. And we are back on the attack duty, Dom. Plays that one back to McGoldrick. Fletcher back to Victoros. Hopefully won't take him too long to actually become eligible for the national team. And there's another goal this time. We do it down the right-hand side. Gil Paquette this time squares that one for Michael James Gilbert. And already he's on a hat-trick. Has been in pretty good form, obviously, since yesterday's episode where he did grab the hat-trick in that Champions League final. But unfortunately, some poor goalkeeping really did cost us in that game, but a great start here. We're 2-0 up inside 10 minutes. And we have to wait a little while until the next highlight in this game, just past the 20-minute mark there, and we do keep the ball as we try and play it forward down that left-hand side. Bit of a deflection there off a Royals defender, but thankfully back on the ball. A nice switch out there to Paquette on the edge of the box. In there for Gilbert on that hat-trick. Good chance there to put that top left corner, but it just goes high and it just goes wide. But as you can see there, stats-wise, we're certainly the team on the front foot and now we're back on the attack there Walker inside the box that one that comes off the woodwork he then gets brought down but apparently no penalty but good chance for us there to make it 3-0 can't quite get the job done but as we're trying to wrap that one up another highlight here just shy of the half hour mark and the Royals here actually on the ball for the first time I think we've seen for a decent period in this game they now try and get something going down the right hand side and Morris will try and do something here for the home team, floats that one far post 
Not too sure who for. It's been a well in go. Somehow out jumps both Victoros and Julian Pike and loops that one over Granville in goal and makes it to well. Granville staying actually over Matt Ford just to keep that quota up of under 20 players. Him and Jose Pedro are the lone ones in our team today, but that bit of a soft goal to concede. And yet again, that so far is the only shot that the Royals have hit on target, just like Christchurch United in that previous game, but now back down the other end for a free kick to Michael James Gilbert. There's his hat trick. What a way to complete it. He is pretty good at those free kicks. I'm actually starting to wonder if we should start him over Al Ghazali because of that. That is a wonderful strike there. Did get some help from the underside of the crossbar, but his hat trick makes it 3 1. And only a few minutes on from that hat trick to Gilbert. Now we're back down that end here for a corner going far post. And the new New Zealander in Georgios Victoros will head that one home as you'd expect him to with that jumping reach, that heading as we always go on about. It's a set piece goal, which will hopefully put this game to bed nice and early for one with about five minutes left in the first half. And that will do it for the first half in this top of the table clash. And it's going pretty well for us here for one up at halftime. Thanks to that hat trick from Michael James Gilbert and also that late goal to Victor Ross from set piece. A little bit concerningly, we've conceded the only shot on target that the Royals have had, but being 4 1 up, don't think we need to worry about that too much. We'll make a change here at halftime. George Ross Victor Ross is just down to a slightly deeper yellowy green heart than the other players, and Sean Stride will give some game time to as a centre back instead of a right back like he's been playing at the moment, while Callan Elliott is out with injury, but a good first half, hopefully. We just make sure we hold on and pick up all three points. And the first half of the second half comes 10 minutes into it. It's a free kick. McGoldrick takes that one short, looking for Ahmed Shusha. Those short free kicks have stood a lot on this year's game. They are so overpowered, and Shusha with an absolute rocket there into the top right corner. That makes it 5-1. That'll be three more points than what on paper looks like. Our toughest game of the season, considering where these guys are in terms of table position in the Southern League. 5-1 up as we're up to the hour mark. And just a bit to make it way into the last 20 minutes of this game. And now I think it's a good time for us here to take off some of our more important players. So we're going to take off here Jose Pedro for Bailey Stevenson. Can try him out as a left back. Just see what he can do there. And also we'll take off our best player in terms of ratings. And Gil Paquette. And coming on for him will be Josh Tulubi. That's all our subs used with a 5-1 lead and 20 minutes left. And to be fair, outside of that free kick, which we did score through Shusha, the second half hasn't been up to a heck of a lot, but a late highlight here. And the Dedington City Royals are on the attack, and yet again, out jump there on our right-hand side this time, Stride and Pike, and Ingo makes it 5-2 to us. They just closed that margin a little bit, but thankfully, it is just a consolation goal. Header into the ground, makes its way past Granville there, our young goalkeeper, who, as I said at the moment, Actually, it's a start with the fact most of our other good under-20 players are away at that World Cup. But thankfully, we hold on and pick up three points, albeit being four and up at halftime. That was never really in doubt. But hopefully, that means a win in our next game against Fury Me Bays. Might mean we can lift the title with a win at home over Nelson Suburbs in that second game of today's episode. But obviously, Michael James Gilbert, first half hat trick, a big factor in that one as we pick up a 5-2 win over the Dunedin City Royals. So a good one for us there first up. In today's episode, and we've gone forward off the back of that about to take on Nelson Suburbs. And as you can see, we've got four games left in our season. 11 points clear on top of the table. So that means just one more win from these last four games will secure us the Southern League title. And hopefully we can do it in this next one before a two-month break in terms of fixtures in this competition. As I said earlier, we have a break while the Northern and Central Leagues do catch up to us. That does mean we picked up a win over Fairy Mead Base. 3 0 at home this one. Very comfortable, albeit did take us until the second half to get on the score sheet. But Shusha with a double and Michael James Gilbert continues his run of scoring goals there. Those two goals did happen pretty late, but thankfully we do pick up a 3 0 win there. So a win in this next game will secure us that Southern League title before we get stuck in to this big game against Nelson Suburbs. And also have a look at those guys, considering we haven't played them on camera so far since we have come to Kashmir Technical. There are a couple of things worth noting. First up, we've actually got a new contract here at Kashmir, which is a bit surprising considering they were expecting us to win the Champions League this season. 
they don't seem to mind that. We are now locked in until the end of 2031, so a new contract for us here at Kashmir Technical. And also, we have got a transfer going through for one of our players at the club now that the Champions League is over. Don't need to keep players around who were registered for that competition. So Rosane Biggio, he is on his way back to Brazil to AES Confiasa SE for a fee of £36,000. Those guys are down in Serie B in Brazil, but this is a player we picked up on a free, really improved in that left-back position going into this season. And considering that it is third choice these days, it did seem like a good idea to let him go, especially because he had no interest in renewing his contract here. So we decided to let him go. Wouldn't have minded keeping him on £190 a week, but unfortunately, no interest in staying. So he is on his way back to Brazil in early July. And also, we've got an injury off the back of that first game of today's episode as well. Nathan Walker, a bruised ankle, will keep him out of this upcoming game. But thankfully, not a big one is just out for one more day, but we're to take on my local club actually in Nelson Suburbs. This one though is at the Garrick Memorial Park, so it can't do a bus trip, we'll get there eventually. It'll be the most in-depth bus trip you've ever seen in your life, but these guys currently good on the table. Real fight about to develop here between them and Dunedin City Royals for that second spot, considering still gotta play both of them once in the second half of the season, so they're probably gonna both lose those games. So it's a real fight in three games to see which one of those two teams will make their way into the National League alongside us, provided we don't completely stuff things up in these last couple of games. But so far, we have not lost to these guys in the Southern League, to be fair. Haven't lost to anyone so far in the Southern League, but at home, hopefully, this is a team we can beat, even though their recent form pretty good, apart from a loss to Western Rovers in the first round of the Chatham Cup, just looking at the players they've got there. No one too familiar to me, despite the fact this is my local team, of course, these days. We are in 2029. We'll see when the team sheets come up for the game, if there's any more familiar faces that I do know from real life. But hopefully, this is the game where we can seal back-to-back -back Southern League titles as we take on Nelson Suburbs from the GMP. And here are the team sheets in this game where we could potentially steal the title against Nelson Suburbs. Couple of changes for us here. Anderson's actually back from the Under-20 World Cup. They got knocked out by Uruguay. A couple of other players come in. Connor Kerwin, obviously, also back from that World Cup. Also, Lapane in the midfield and on the wings. We've got some changes as well to Luvi outright. And actually trying Pahas as left winger, considering no Walker. And unfortunately, Shusha is on quite a heavy workload. So just trying to play things safe here with our selections. For this one, also Al Ghazali is back up front as well. But hopefully, this is a game where we can steal the Southern League title. And it's taken a while for the first highlight in this game, the half hour mark, and there is a corner here in our favour, looking far post there for Connor Kerwin, back from that World Cup, which unfortunately ended on a bit of a bum note there, a 2-0 loss to Uruguay for our under-20s, but unfortunately actually looped that one over the goalkeeper, but cleared off the line. We'll see if this highlight does continue. It does not off the back of a clearance from Nelson Suburbs today. They are in the all-purple, but we, so far in this game, well and truly on the front foot, but it looks like Nothing much happening in the first half, albeit now there's a late highlight as we're about to make our way into two minutes of added time. Fletcher rather fortunately keeps hold of the ball. Now Pike inside the box plays that back to Lepane looking for that top left corner. Comes off the woodwork and then Dominguez for some reason heads that one out for a goal kick, albeit we are going to see that goal kick. So maybe that's not the worst thing. They pump that one deep through their goalkeeper, but Kerwin heads that one down and now Pahas today as a left winger, as I said, a bit unconventional for a player we've been using as a defensive midfielder, but we'll see what he can do while some other players in that position are quite injury prone, but Pike, he's on the ball again, rather fortunate to keep it, but there, Nelson Suburbs can kind of clear the danger, goes back in there, it's a bit of a cluster inside the box, but they do clear the lines, so it will stay nil all for now, but this highlight does continue, Pike, but Lapane gets it back, he now makes his way Inside the box, squares that one nicely for Al Ghazali, who puts it away. But unfortunately, he is offside. That one won't count. And it looks like we might be going to the sheds here, locked up at nil all. Indeed, that is the case. And Dominguez actually picked up a yellow card around halfway through that first half. So maybe a couple of changes needed here at half time. But Beefier not playing too badly. Nelson Suburbs up to nothing at all. But our XG not too high either. So we might bring on some big guns here. I don't think Pahas is working 
as a left winger. We'll try Gil Bikid out there instead. And also we'll bring on Sean Stride for Dominguez. Julian Pike can go out to left back instead of right back. So a couple of changes going in to the second half. Hopefully won't be quite as clunky as it looks like we might have been in that first half. As we need that win to secure the Southern League title. And it hasn't taken long here for the first title of the second half. A free kick here to Al Ghazali. But that forces a decent save there. Out of the suburbs goalkeeper. As I said not too sure if he's quite as good as Gilbert. At those free kicks. But that time actually forces a decent save. Out of the goalkeeper from the corner. We get the ball inside the box. Looking near far post. Former Goldrick, but unfortunately can't quite connect with his head with what looked like to be pretty much an open net. And off the back of that, Al Ghazali actually on a 6.4 will try Gilbert. Does seem to be in some better form. That's all our subs used. Still nil all as we make our way up to the hour mark. And we've just made our way into the last 20 minutes of this game. It's another free kick for us here in the second half. Jansen that time will try it. It comes off the crossbar and the goalkeeper can claim it. So, so far, second half looks like set pieces are our best chances, but as we're about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this one, still nil all, and that's not quite enough for us to lift the title, but I think it's now time for us to up the tempo, go a bit wider, and do our general more attacking things like we did late against Auckland City in the Champions League, and thankfully did get that goal back to take it to extra time, even though didn't quite hold on for the win because of penalties, but now it's time for us to go more positive as we search for the title winning goal. And just like in that Auckland City game, hasn't taken us too long to make those changes for a highlight to happen in this time, a free kick, which is taking quite a while to take place. Johnson stands over this one, very similar spot where Gilbert scored against the Dunedin City Royals in that first game of today's episode. We'll try and put that one top right corner, but yet again, that forces a really good save out of the Nelson Suburbs goalkeeper so far. Fair to say he might be keeping them in this game. A corner off the back of that. Janssen takes his time yet again. Not too sure why considering. And quite keen to pick up a win from this game. Unfortunately can't quite connect from that though. Inside the box. Still nil all will demand more. And there's a highlight now on the 88 minute mark. Lepane off the back of that ball from Fletcher. He'll find Pike in a little bit of space. Cuts inside. He'll pick out Sean Strider on the right hand side, he gets tackled, but they do win the ball there through Edwards, albeit we keep it, we float this one far post, it somehow falls to Paquette, but for some reason doesn't actually take on a shot, now Pike plays that back to Lapane. 1-2, Lapane with a shot, pretty much those straight into the path of the suburbs goalkeeper, and it is still nil all, as we're about to make our way into three minutes of added time, yet another corner, we're going to try and put this one, it looks like near post, hopefully, for the head of McGoldrick. Instead it's Kerwin. And it's pretty easy save there. For the suburbs goalkeeper. But the highlights. They do continue late. Just like in that Champions League final yesterday. Sean Stride is on the ball. Puts in there for Tuluvi. That shot gets blocked now. Paquette plays that back to Pike. Lepane outside the box. Starts to make his way forward. And rifles that one top right corner. It's a wonderful effort there. From Alessandro Lepane. Our backup deep line playmaker. Off the back of that. Time for us. To start time wasting, just a little bit to make sure we do hold on here and pick up the league title. But that is a late goal. Yet again, going more attacking does just seem to help with those a bit instead of our usual low tempo play. So off the back of that, going to go back to a standard defensive line. Just slow the pace down and time waste ever so slightly. Be more disciplined as well. But hopefully considering Nelson Suburbs haven't done much of anything in this game so far, that is the goal that will seal us back-to-back -back seven league tolls as well as our place in the championship phase of the National League. But Lapane there with a bit of individual brilliance. And eventually we get one past their goalkeeper who has had one heck of a game, I would dare say. Three minutes of added time and thankfully that is all that we need. I say that there was actually five, but we pick up a 1-0 win thanks to that late strike there from Alessandro Lapane. And so far, gone through the season without even drawing a game, let alone losing one here in these Southern Leagues are doing just slightly better than we did last season and we pick up back-to-back -back Southern League titles off the back of a 1-0 win over my local club team. Sorry guys, Nelson Suburbs and here is the trophy lift for our second straight Southern League title. So we just do enough there to pick up that 1-0 win over Nelson Suburbs, which does mean we lift back-to-back -back Southern League titles here with Kashmir Technicals. So we're all through to the National League Championship phase 
for later this season. Still got a wee while though to wait until then, but there you can see all the inbox items. Everyone quite happy with us for securing our place in that championship phase of the National League, as well as picking up yet another trophy for Kashmir technically, even though we still haven't really won one of the big ones here with this club since we did make the move from AFC Auckland, but I think they will do it for today's episode, finishing things off there by lifting the seven lead toll. If you enjoyed the episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. Now I'll just check what we've actually got coming up because there is a massive gap now until we play our next meaningful game. And I don't know if Christchurch United in the second round of the Chatham Cup counts because they haven't been much top this season, even though they did push us in that game before today's episode in the National League. So what I'm actually do is come back on Tuesday because there's a long weekend coming up with Easter and whatnot. I'll get through this big gap that we've got coming up and get forward to the championship phase of the National League. Also see if I can pinch some of those players from both the Phoenix and AFC Auckland when those contracts do expire. So it'll be a couple of days longer until the next episode of this series will make the most of Easter weekend. And I'll take a couple of days off and get up to where there's some more meaningful games and we'll come back then also there's one game with the All Whites in between now and then but it's in our group of the World Cup qualification in Oceania and we're already guaranteed to go for on top of that so that game also has no meaning so I think I'll go forward until there's a more meaningful game probably near the start of the championship phase of the National League or if we take on a big gun in the Chatham Cups. So we'll come back for that Tuesday next week so enjoy your Easter weekend and until we come back for the championship phase of the National League hopefully this time you can pick up that trophy. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.